We're um, asking folks to put in the chat where they're calling in from or Zooming in from this morning, as well as what program you're interested in so that we can tailor this uh, conversation today to be um, tailored to your goals. Uh, my name is Nicole Alonzo and I'm the graduate recruiter for the School of Film, Film and Television here at LMU. And I'd also like to take this opportunity to introduce Gino Brancolini and Patty Meyer. Um, Gino is our graduate program director for the film and television uh, production program, and Patty is our graduate program director for our screenwriting program. So Gino and, Gino and Patty, do you wanna say a couple words? Yeah, hello everybody. Thank you for joining us today. We, uh, we hope we can answer the questions you might have about our program, and we hope you're excited about LMU. And I uh, second that. I'm so glad so many of you were able to join us today. This is one benefit of Zoom meetings. You can uh, meet us without traveling too far, just to your living room, to your laptop. Um, I am the graduate director of both the writing for the screen program and the writing and producing for television program. So I look forward to answering your questions. And the, uh, and the other benefit of this is that Patty and Nicole and I don't have to fight LA traffic to get to campus. Right. <laughs> Which is the best part of working from home. <laughs> <laughs> So we just want to take this opportunity today to give you an overview of the SFTV experience, our curriculum, our programming and events, as well as leave some time for Q&A, like we said at the end. Um, so if you can please just hold any questions that you have until the end, um, that will help us to have a um, to stay on time and also so we can get through the presentation more quickly. Um, and also too, if you can uh, mute your microphones, uh, except for our hosts today, so that way we don't have any uh, disruptions. Um, but now more about SFTV and we're gonna start with the short video of our graduate campus called the Playa Vista Campus, which is where our SFTV students uh, take and film most of their projects. And here we go. School of Film and Television is one of the top rated film schools in the country for lots of reasons. We've got state of the art equipment, we've got industry professionals who are teaching us, we're in the heart of Hollywood, and we just opened a beautiful new graduate film campus in the heart of Playa Vista. So the new facility here in Playa Vista is light, bright, very creative space, the kind of space that I think encourages students and faculty to be more creative. One of the things we, we endeavored to do in the designing of this space was to, as best as we could, to future protect it. Because one of the things we know about storytelling and filmmaking is it's constantly changing. The wonderful thing about the new space is it's expanded our facilities. And I'm just very excited about seeing what kind of original works our students are going to be generating. One of the things that I've been most impressed with Playa is all of the collision spaces. Writers are going to literally bump into directors and editors and animators. I'm really excited to just play in this space. The relationship we're going to be building with Silicon Beach is going to be incredibly beneficial because one, they're always looking for new voices and we are definitely looking for work and new ways to show our work. And so they're going to be able to see what we do. We're going to be able to network with them, get our stuff out there. You know, the School of Film Intelligence being here means that we bring our values, we bring what we believe in. And I think what we believe in, in the School of Film and Television, is that a, a well-told story can change the world. You know, I've always said it's a medium of light, and we get to choose where we shine our light. And I believe LMU helps people shine that light in the places we need most. All right, so that was just a short film um, about our Playa Vista campus. And LMU has been a top 10 film school for many years and for many reasons. Like Dean Reisky said in our video, um, we are in the heart of the media and entertainment industry here in LA. And we also have access to state of the art facilities and equipment. And because of that, we've been recognized by the Hollywood Reporter as the top seven film school in the US, as well as the RAP as the number eight film school in the US. And we're dedicated to making all those who come here feel welcome, seen, and heard. And that's reflected in our diverse student body. We work to make sure that our student body reflects the diversity of the world we live in. And students come from all over the world, including, um, including places like China, Canada, France, Russia, India, Barbados, South Korea, Kazakhstan, Qatar, Turkey, and Netherlands, just to name a few countries. 
And we also have a really tight knit community here, about 219 graduate students this past uh, school year. Um, and you're not just a number here because we also have a very low student to faculty ratio with 12 to one. And we're very fortunate too that over 400 companies, uh, media and entertainment companies have partnered with us where students intern. Um, and that's been very helpful for our students' professional development. We also host networking events. We partner with leading organizations and studios such as Film Independent and Village Roadshow Entertainment Group. And we also have a dedicated in-house career and festivals manager who will help you build a solid foundation for a career in a field that's constantly changing and evolving. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Professor Gino Brangolini, our graduate director for film and television production to talk to you about our student films. So um, take it away, uh, Gino. Thank you. I, I, wanna make, I wanna make a comment on, um, on, the, on the class size. Uh, even though our, our general ratio is 12 to one, many of our classes only have six or eight students in it. Uh, especially in production, and I, I'm sure that's the case in screenwriting too with Patty, that um, a great many of our classes are only six to eight students, which means you get a really, you get a really personal experience, almost a tutorial kind of experience when you're here. And uh, we, we produce um, uh, approximately 800 productions uh, a year uh, within the, the program, and we have a, an office called the Production Administration Team that supports the the production of, the, of those projects and uh, provides equipment uh, for, for their execution. Next slide, Pam. Um, that, that office has eight advanced cameras, like top of the line professional cameras and 22 intermediate cameras. Um, if, somebody's, if somebody's a real, please excuse me, my cat keeps jumping in and out here. And, his name is Eli. So if you see tails in front of me or a head in front of me, that's Eli. <laughs> Every time I get on Zoom, my cat likes to join me for some reason. So uh, we, have, we have a number of professional cameras. If you're kind of a gearhead and you wanna know more specifics about those, um, ask, uh, ask during the question period and I can give you a, a more of a, a complete list of what we have. Uh, next slide. Okay, and also a great many of our SFT graduates have excelled in, in, film, in the film and television industry as writers, producers, directors, executives, and agents. Uh, Patty and I would like to introduce a few of those to you whom we are especially proud of. So uh, to begin with, we have Melissa Blake, who is the writer producer of Ghost Whisperer, Criminal Minds, and Sleepy Hollow, which is totally appropriate this time of year. <laughs> we have uh, Brian Hilgelam, screenwriter and director of Legend, writer of Mystic River, Robin Hood, and L.A. Confidential. Effie Brown, producer of Dear White People and Real Women Have Curves. Francis Lawrence, director and producer of The Hunger Games Catching Fire and I Am Legend. Uh, and James Wong producer, writer, film director, mostly known for American Horror Story and Final Destination. Patty? Solomon Onita Jr., a writer and producer known for Joy, Witch Hunt, and Two Hand Touch. Brian Davidson, head of Skydance Animation. Tasha Henderson, writer and producer known for Dating Now, The Cutting Room, and Project Runway and Octavia Bray, who in 2018 was selected for the Disney ABC Diversity Writers Program and who staffed on Disney Channel's Raven's Home. Octavia even worked as a showrunner's assistant on BoJack Horseman while pursuing her MFA here at LMU. And Gloria Calderon Collette, writer producer, One Day at a Time, and Jane the Virgin. Next slide. Then there's more, Camille Tucker, co-writer of this past summer's Lifetime release, The Clark Sisters, the highest rated Lifetime movie since 2016. Evan Romansky, who wrote a prequel in an LMU workshop for One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest and ended up selling it with Ryan Murphy to Fox. No doubt you have seen Ratchet, a limited series which aired in September and was the number one uh, watched show on Netflix for that month. Chikadili Aguna, writer's assistant in the writer's room for Tuca and Birdie, 
a hit animated adult comedy airing on Netflix. Patrick Pittis, right out of school, grad school, Patrick's screenplay Foxhole got optioned by a producer and then his next script, Rubble, was bought by Universal Studios in a bidding war. And finally, Lucien Bourgeli, a Fulbright scholar who won the 2017 Dubai International Film Festival Jury Prize, among many others, for his film, Heaven Without People, the film hit number one on Netflix in Lebanon this past spring. Okay, all right. So at, at this point, let me tell you a little bit about our Master of Fine Arts in Film and Television Production. Um, can I have the next slide, please? Um, the program is a, a 60 unit, three year program, and we allow you to specialize in one of five, five areas. You can do um, a specialization in directing fiction, directing nonfiction, creative producing, cinematography, or editing. Slide, please. The, um, the, way, the way the program is designed is that our first three semesters have a common core, regardless of what your specialization is. And then when you get into your fourth semester, you start taking more courses uh, towards the, your, your interest of, of specialization. Next. So if you look at our, our first year curriculum, and this is the curriculum for, for um, uh, all students, regardless of their specialization choice, in your, your first semester, it, the first year is primarily um, a, a fundamentals year. We're reinforcing fundamentals for those of you that have some background and adding to those fundamentals. And we often get students who don't have a film background. We, we, you know, we, we sometimes have students who are mechanical engineers or civil engineers who are making a transition into film and we provide the fundamentals they need if they, uh, if they don't have film experience already. And so that first semester, you're, you're taking um, uh, Prod 500, which is a directing class. Uh, we call that vision and exploration. We look at different film formats. We, we, one of the big things we wanna do is we wanna have you find your voice while you're a student at LMU. And this course helps, helps you to find your voice. At the same time, you're taking an introduction to cinematography class, an introduction to post-production slash editing class. And then you're taking a screenwriting class um, called Fundamental Cinematic Storytelling, uh, where, where you're beginning to learn to, to write well. And in that class, you are writing a script for a course you will take next semester, which is Production 550. So if we move on to the spring semester, now remember that in your specialization, you can either choose to direct fiction or nonfiction. If you choose to, to direct fiction, then you're gonna be taking uh, screenwriting 530 and you're gonna be writing a script in that class for the following semester, your, your Prod 600 class, or if you choose to do a, a Prod 600 nonfiction documentary film, you'll take Prod 5, uh, Prod 530 and do the pre-production for that film. And then at the same time, you'll be taking this directing two class during which you will be writing, you will be producing the script that you wrote in the fall semester. At the same time, you'll be taking a production planning class and then you'll be taking a sound, a sound for production class that uh, will, will help you uh, learn the, 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 and, and understand how to use sound effectively in your films. So if we move on to the second year, uh, in the fall, now also I wanna emphasize that that first year is 24 credits. The entire program is 60 credits. And, uh, and that, that first year is your, in mo your most intense year in terms of credits when you're taking the most courses. It's also the most expensive year. So if you're, you know, when you're, when you're working on your financial plan, expect to spend the most money in your first year. Um, and then in that second year, you'll be producing the, the script or, or the uh, pre-production that you did the, the previous spring in your, your Prod 600 class. And uh, in that class, you will either direct a seven to 10 minute fiction film or a 10 to 15 minute nonfiction film. At the same time, you'll be taking a seminar in sound. And then at the end of that semester, or towards the end of that semester, you will be asked to declare your specialization. And from this point on, you will structure your program to support which of those five specializations 
uh, you choose you choose to take. In the spring, you start working on those specializations. So you take a, a, an elective in your area of specialization. And then you begin preparing for your thesis film the following year. So you're, you'll either take um, uh, screenwriting 620 well you'll be writing your thesis film or you'll take prod 626 well you'll be pre-producing your documentary thesis film if you choose to go in that direction and then at the same time you'll be taking additional electives uh, in you know what whatever your specialization is uh, this is especially true if you choose a non-directing specialization our program also requires you to take three courses in film studies um, and in the spring of your second year, you begin those film studies classes, well, usually with uh, FTVS 513, which is a seminar in, in American film. And then we require all of our students to also uh, do an internship practicum. Uh, that's generally a non-credit internship, um, but you need, to, you need to register for the class and get credit for it because it's one of our one of our graduation requirements. Uh, you, if, you, if you have a relationship with some sort of pr production entity, we can usually arrange a an internship around that relationship. We also have offices on campus and within the film school and television that help you identify internship possibilities. And can I have the next slide please? And then in your final year, your third year, which is um, 18 hours spread over two semesters, if you're doing the, the uh, directing specialization, you will, you will take Prod 650 and 670, uh, 650 in the fall, and you will shoot your, your thesis film in the fall, and, and then 670 in the spring, and you will edit your thesis film in 670. And at the same time, you'll be taking um, a, a, an additional film studies class. And this is usually the international film studies class. Plus you'll be taking an additional film studies elective. And these are genre courses. Like it could be something like, you know, the, the, uh, the American Western or, or, or the, the, um, the, the, the film of India or African, African uh, film tradition, something like that, uh, women in film. Um, and then you'll be taking two additional production electives and, and those can be a lot of different things that can, depending upon your specialization. And if you're a directing student, your deliverables at the end of your program are an eight to 15 minute narrative fiction film or a 15 to 30 minute documentary film plus a festival submission plan and then the promotional materials related to that plan. If you, are, if you are not specializing in directing, but you're specializing in cinematography or, edit, or editing courses, instead of writing and producing a film, you are working on other people's film. So you would take Prod 670, which is a thesis portfolio class or, uh, or an advanced um, master class in your discipline, and you would be, if you're a cinematography, you would be filming a couple of other people's thesis films. If you're, excuse me, if you're an editor, you will be editing a couple of other peop, uh, people's thesis films. And then you'll be taking additional electives that support your area of specialization. For instance, it might be something like color correction or editing special effects, or if you're a cinematography, uh, uh, advanced visual design. And then the deliver, deliverables for those two um, those two specializations are a two to five minute specialization reel demonstrating your work, uh, an online portfolio or website that is basically marketing you as, as well as additional marketing materials in a personal marketing package. And then you have to demonstrate that you have worked on uh, other thesis projects. You might be asked to write a reflection paper about that. And then you're, you'll be required to promote, to, um, include schedules and budgets and, and uh, workflow diagrams for the projects you worked on. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, okay, and then the, uh, the creative producing 
uh, there's this, this spelling there in the in producing, the creative producing. <laughs> How'd that get past us? <laughs> the, <laughs> goes to show that even we aren't perfect. The, uh, the creative producing uh, specialization is a, a little different. Your emphasis is on, on uh, uh, producing either film or television. And uh, to meet those requirements, you have to take a, a producing master class. Uh, a screenwriting entertainment business affairs class, plus your your seminars uh, in international film and your thesis portfolio. And the, the deliverables for those are that you have to work as a producer on, on two thesis projects. And those can either be a, um, a film and television production thesis film or a writing and producing for television thesis film in the screenwriting department. And then you have to complete a thesis project with your Bible, pitching materials, marketing plan, and a lookbook. You have to, you have to uh, create a digital proof of concept or a written treatment and visual pitch for a web series. And you need to put together a riptone reel or a visual sales tool for that web series that, you've, uh, that you're pitching. So that's kind of like a quick overview. We can, you know, we can answer more specific questions about the programs if you, if you have them in the question and answer uh, period. Um, and, I, and then, oh yeah, and, and then finally, um, in addition to your, your uh, curricular classroom work, we have a, a number of special events that, that we offer. Um, one that Patty and I are especially fond of is our Film Rush. And they, the first week you're on campus, but one of the things that we, uh, we emphasize um, uh, actually a great deal is getting our, our film and television production people working with screenwriting people. And to do this right from the get-go, uh, we pair uh, producer director types with screenwriters and we do this event called Film Rush where you have 24 hours, and this is your, like your very first week on campus, you have 24 hours to get together uh, come up with a short, a short film, we give you a prompt, and then you, you have to come up with a short film working together in teams that we've assigned that are comprised of both screenwriters and, and film and television production students. And you have to write it, shoot it, edit it in, in a day. And then at the end of the day, we have a screening and a, and a kind of pizza reception. It's a really fun event that, that's a, a great kicker for the, for the beginning of, of your time at LMU. And the film is what, like three minutes? Max? It's two minutes, usually two, two minutes. Two minutes, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and then uh, throughout the year, we offer a number of film craft workshops. These are you know, extracurricular workshops, and and they're they're things like um, they're, they're really kind of nuts and bolts things. Like you know, how do you load a truck when you're going out on a shoot? How do you operate a, an electrical generator when you're uh, when you're on set? Uh, you know, what, what sort of, um, we're really big on safety. And so we have several, several workshops that deal with, with safety and permitting. And uh, especially, you know, for those of you who are not in the LA area or not in a big city, it is very different shooting film in Vincennes, Indiana than it is in Los Angeles. You have to permit everything and, uh, and you have to be extremely careful about where you're shooting and how you're shooting. And, and so we have workshops that, that help you learn those things. We also have mixers with the screenwriting students where the film um, and television production students mix with the screenwriting students. Again, we, mm -hmm. we, we attempt throughout your time here to break down silos and get you all working together because this is a hugely collaborative industry. The people that you're working with while you're in film school are the people that you're gonna to continue to work with and we want you doing that from the get go. And then, uh, Patty has a uh, Patty has created a working for partners uh, workshop where we actually force screenwriters and uh, and and film and television production people to work together on projects. And then we also do a, a, a special workshop on the art of pitching where we bring in uh, an industry professional and uh, he helps teach you how to make a good pitch. All right, I'm going to turn it over to Patty at this time. 
Hi again, everyone. Uh, so we're going to start first with the writing for the screen MFA program, and then we'll talk about the writing and producing for television program, affectionately known as WPTV. So let's start with writing for the screen. Uh, so in your fall semester, um, you're going to dive into our newly refined elements of screenwriting class where you will uh, drill into character development, story structure, dramatic structure, um, which is a, a class that feeds nicely into our motion picture analysis class where our professor Doug Ebach will take you through about a dozen films and break them down through structure and character arc, etc. And coupled with that will be the one film and television studies elective that you will be required to take while you're here. And those are anything from American film studies to, you know, a Billy Wilder seminar, uh, international film studies. Um, they change from semester to semester. But we feel it's important as screenwriters to be well versed in the canon. In fact, when you are accepted, we send you a list of required viewing and reading uh, list so that you can step into our program fairly well versed in both American and international film. Uh, in the spring, um, this will be the one class as a screenwriter you'll take in producing and directing fundamentals as well as you'll dive into writing your first screenplay. And then uh, you'll additionally take a spec episodic writing class, either in drama or comedy. And what that means is the professor, who's a well-seasoned showrunner and writer's room writer, will choose a, an existing show. And you, as a writer's room, will come up with a new season break those that season into episodes and you'll each write an episode. So this year, one of our professors chose Mindhunter for one hour drama and Yellowstone, another uh, uh, professor is chosen. And then for comedy, what are they doing? I think it's Brooklyn 99. Um, all right, so next slide, more fun. Second year, you'll be writing your second screenplay called the intermediate screenplay while rewriting your first screenplay. And I want to say the beauty of the three-year program is that it allows writers to take rewrite classes, which if any of you have written know that all the really good writing happens in the rewrite phase. Um, and this is crucial to uh, delivering a portfolio at the end of three years with very polished reader ready material for the industry. You're not going to get there without these rewrite classes. Um, and finally, your third class will be the required entertainment and business affairs class taught by two seasoned creative producers. Um, it is imperative that writers become their best entrepreneurs. You must understand the business. You are selling your wares. It's not just pitching. You need to know the marketplace. You need to know the difference between what is it to sell to Paramount Studios versus Netflix? And you will learn all of that, including the legal aspects of WGA contracts, et cetera. In your spring semester, you'll be required to take feature film adaptation. Needless to say, Hollywood loves IP, intellectual property, and that's the essence of adaptation. Um, and so we insist that you become uh, develop an expertise in adapting true stories, magazine articles, books, etc. And then here again, you're going to do a rewrite of the second screenplay you wrote in the fall. That'll happen in the spring. And you'll have your choice of electives in the spring, anything from video game writing to sketch writing, uh, writing for production. You can take an original drama or TV pilot um, or comedy TV pilot course. We have a new one about world building, which is crucial, especially in the realms of sci-fi, uh, writing branded content, and film and TV development. And then your third year, you'll be writing your third screenplay. That'll be your thesis. That's a class that I love to teach. We're immersed in it right now. Um, you'll also take writing the original drama pilot or comedy pilot. Uh, Again, as you know, from seeing the marketplace, you as a screenwriter must be able to cross platforms and formats 
and write for television as well. That may be your first job in the business is in a writer's room. Um, and finally, more electives. Um, we do, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we do re uh, offer a rewrite class in pilot writing, but then again, you can take sketch writing, video game writing uh, as well. And those electives change throughout each semester. Finally, uh, third and culminating semester, you'll be rewriting your thesis screenplay while at the same time taking your portfolio workshop. Now, this is the culminating class where you have that one last chance to polish all of the work, both features and pilots that you've written while at LMU. Um, again, the benefits of the three-year program. And then at the same time, you'll be prepping for our first pitch event, which is the culminating live one-on-one -on -one speed pitching event that happens the week after you graduate. Uh, we will be rehearsing you, giving you opportunities to pitch to industry uh, panels, uh, to practice and rehearse. You also will be assembling your page for the MFA screenwriting directory. Um, that means your photo contact information and log lines for your portfolio will be in that uh, publication, which then gets sent out to many hundreds of industry folks. And that generates a whole slew of meetings, if not representation for our writers. So that's the writing for the screen program. And let's jump to writing and producing for television. So I'm sure some of you are wondering, so what's the fun fundamental difference between the two if as a feature writer, you're also writing TV? The fundamental difference is the thesis. In writing and producing for television, your thesis is a produced trailer, a pilot, sizzle reel for a show that you've built out as your thesis. Um, in writing for the screen, your thesis is a screenplay, not a produced project. So that's the fundamental difference. That doesn't mean as a screenwriter, you can't participate in production. And many of our writing for the screen grads do collaborate and assist WPTV kids, if not production grads on their projects, as I do believe as a writer, you need to know what it is to be on a set. You need to know how that works. After all, we're writing for a production. So first semester of WPTV, you'll be taking an introduction to TV producing for those many of you have no production experience and that's okay. Um, you'll be taking elements of television writing, which is the parallel version of our feature elements course where you will dig into structure, formatting, character development, arcs, breaking a season, really understanding uh, what TV development is and um, our elective, I'm sorry, it's not elective, it's required for good reason, history of television. Again, you must know what came before. We want you to have a context for, for where you will step in as a television writer producer. Um, in the spring, you'll be taking the spec drama or comedy course that I mentioned in the previous program, breaking a season of an existing show and writing episodes. And then you'll be required to take your one feature screenwriting class. This is something that I teach that I love. Um, I introduce TV writers into the realm of what it is to write a two hour feature film. And though some of the WPTV grads that come in grumbling saying, hey, I didn't sign up for this, they in the inevitably come out of it not only having written a fantastic feature, but bringing those skills they've learned back to their TV writing. It's incredibly helpful. And finally, in the first uh, year spring, the TV writer's room where dedicated showrunners, ongoing seasoned uh, writer producers will teach you what that experience of the writer's room is. Second year, uh, we begin fall semester. You'll be joining the Writing for the Screen grads in the Entertainment Business Affairs class, which I mentioned before how crucial it is to know all things about the business. So you have a leg up as a writer producer. Uh, writing the drama pilot and writing the comedy pilot are required. You may think of yourself as a comedy writer only, but then you may take 
the drama pilot class and discover, oh my God, I've just discovered my drama chops or I've created a one hour dramedy, which is a fairly new genre for TV that's perfectly viable as a one hour. In the spring, you'll dive into uh, the technical nuts and bolts aspects of production in your te television planning, budgeting and scheduling class. Uh, that will be applied to the thesis project that will become your culminating project while at LMU. You're gonna rewrite the pilot you wrote in the fall semester and you'll take electives anything again from sketch writing to writing for video games as well as adaptation and playwriting and your final year uh television producing is uh the deep dive into prepping your thesis project you'll take two more writing electives one of which can be another rewrite class for the pilot you wrote in the previous year and then uh all gears up you'll be immersed in production and post-production on your thesis project, that's 681, and the portfolio workshop, where we integrate both writing for the screen and WPTV grads, where you will do those final polishes on all the work you've done while at LMU. You'll devise that screenwriting directory page I mentioned, prep for first pitch, finish your internships, and get ready for your industry launch. Uh, we like to call the spring semester of the third year for both programs, the industry launch uh, semester. And uh, that again is the, um, the blessing of the three year structure of our program. Special events, um, as Gino indicated, we do collaborative events, working with partners where you come up with a pitch to present to a panel of industry guests we prep you in pitching, we help you overcome your, overcome your panic, because as we know, many of us are writers because we like to huddle alone in a room, stay in our minds with our laptop, but there's another very important skill you must have in your toolkit, and that is pitching, performance, crucial. That's how you sell. And then we gear you up for the one-on-one -on -one, uh, speed pitch first pitch culminating event, which I mentioned happens after you graduate. And we move, okay, so uh, <clears throat> a very exciting evening. This is a shot of our first pitch event from a year ago. And here are our grads, both in Running for the Screen and WPTV, pitching to 50 industry professionals. It's a fantastic experience for them. And this is our Playa Vista uh, gallery uh, event space. Fond memories. Um, we offer an industry mentor program, not just offer, but we guarantee it. When you graduate in writing for the screen in WPTV, we uh, align you with an industry mentor, a professional who commits to meeting with you three times during your first year after graduation to help guide you. They often read your material, they advise you, they push you along. Uh, it's an invaluable um, boon to our program to have this kind of connection to an industry pro right out of the gate. And here's just a, a copy of our directory. If you wanna take a look at it, you can log on to LMU, MFA directory 2020 and click on it and a PDF copy will pop up. This is uh, this just this recent past year's directory, which as always gets distributed to hundreds of industry professionals, at which point they start hitting up our writers for script requests and meetings. Even in this time of COVID, our writers are busy taking meetings, getting represented. It's quite exciting. And questions for Gino and me, now that we've given you the lay of the land of our programs. Feel free to speak up and unmute yourself. I got a quick question for you. Please identify yourself. Hey, my name is David Rivers. Uh, can we um, get rid of the share screen so we can see everyone? Thank you. Awesome. Hi. I'm right here. Can you all see me? Hear me? Yes. 
Yeah. Okay. Hi, David. Hey, how you doing? Just quick question. How do do y'all accept transfers? Like I'm, I'm, I am in the current program. And I just want to know, do you all accept like transfers, et cetera? Uh, we don't accept transfers into the into the film and television production program. You would have to begin the program, like any you know, like any student coming into the program with the the first year, first semester classes. Okay. We do in undergrad, but not in grad. Gotcha, gotcha. So I would have to apply like all over, et cetera, if I wanted to attend. Okay. Yes, that's correct. Gotcha. Other I questions? Have a question. Yes. Sure. Hi, um, my name is Hannah, and I um, I don't come from a film background, but I have I started by writing my own uh, short film, which I want to turn into a feature. I'm kind of realizing, being in this intro or in this info session, that I'm interested in the screenwriting program for TV as well. Could I possibly apply to both programs, or how would that work? Well, you can apply to both programs, but you'll have to choose. Uh, if you get accepted to both programs, which one you'll take. So they are distinctively different. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure Gino can speak to this, but the production program really does train you in those production skills and the specialization that you choose will be your major focus as you go through the second and third year. Um, writing is not the emphasis, though you will have opportunities to write. In our writing programs, writing is the emphasis. The portfolio is a collection of works you have written while at LMU. Though you will have opportunities to produce, especially if you end up in WPTV. And by the way, many of our writers come in, they've been novelists, journalists, bloggers. They have not speech writers. Some have never written a full length screenplay. We are looking for unique voices, unique human beings who want to develop yourself as storytellers, who have a, a serious vision and reason for wanting to be a storyteller. And that to us is more important than how many movies you've produced or whether or not you've ever written a feature before. And I, I, I would also reflect that in the production program. Um, you know, it's it's great if you're coming in with with filmmaking experience, but you don't have to be coming in with filmmaking experience. And we too are interested in uh, unique people who have a story to tell, and we will provide the tools for you to tell those stories well. Exactly. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, I have a question regarding um, kind of crossover between the two programs. Um, my name is Akash, I'm from Wisconsin. Um, I was wondering if I'm, I'm most interested in the film um, production MFA, and I was wondering what opportunity there is to potentially be able to take writing courses um, as those elective courses, or if there's any opportunity to do that, or if those are kind of closed off and kind of sectioned uh, only for the writing students. Not, a, not entirely. Uh, Patty can add to this after, uh, after I give my perspective. But um, well, first of all, you're required to take writing courses as part of the production program. You know, the, the, the writing courses um, in the production program are taught by screenwriting uh, faculty mostly. So like that, that first year writing class you take that writing class that you uh, take later for your, your Prod 600 film are taught by screenwriting faculty. And then uh, we also allow some writing courses as electives at, uh, if you can get into those writing courses. For instance, we've had students who have taken a feature film writing class as an advanced production elective. So th there, there is a you know, a limited amount of crossover. I don't know, Patty, if you want to add to that. Sure. I know so. hmm. Yeah, with space, uh, space allowed in our workshops, because we really try to keep writing workshops down to seven or eight, um, we will welcome a production grad who's uh, got a particular driving interest in screenwriting. Um, we don't want to turn you away. And we, as Gino said, we really encourage collaboration and crossover among the departments. Um, so, and I have been uh, approached by production grads who've asked me to read their work as a favor even and give them notes. And 
uh, we as faculty at LMU are incredibly accessible, um, more so than any other program I've taught in. And I do feel incumbent upon me to say that I spent four years at Chapman and 10 years at American Film Institute, AFI, as a screenwriting faculty. And coming to LMU five years ago was the happiest, most positive experience for me as a teacher and a grad director. Um, and when I see numbers like number seven and number eight, it irks me because I have hands-on experience to tell you that our program is superlative. And I say that from a wealth of context and experience. Um, we really teach you how to write, how to make your movies, how to find your voice. We would never impose upon anyone a, a, an opinion or a story that isn't yours. And we, that's why we embrace all of you who have your unique stories and experiences to adapt as, as films and television shows. So I think I, um, Patty, yeah. if I could add, if I could add to that, one of one of the advantages of LMU over some other schools is that you own your intellectual property here at LMU. If you make a film, like for instance, your thesis film, if you make a blockbuster thesis film and you can sell that film and uh, you know and, into distribution and make a pile of money on it, it's your money. I mean, you, now you have to you you pay the cost of producing your films but you own the rights to anything you produce as a student at LMU. I we have a couple of questions yeah. in the chat. Oh. oh, let's see if I can find them. Um, what's um, your name? So uh, Patty, I can read it out. Okay. Um, if you want to answer. So it's a question that two questions about screenwriting. One is from Simon and he asks, can writing for the screen students also take a writing for video games course? Oh yeah, I wrote him back. Absolutely. That's one of your electives. Um, and in fact, it's a very popular course. You can imagine we have up to 12 in that course uh, because people clamor to take it. You learn from a actual seasoned video game writer producer of how you go about creating that very elaborate uh, treatment for a game. And I'm sure many of you are gamers. You know how many twists, turns, permutations, choices, alternatives there are. You learn how to do that. Yes, you may take it. And we also have another question um, from Saksham Gupta. Where do most of the screenwriting grads find themselves after the course or after they've graduated? Well, you can strike it hot like Evan Romansky and sell your spec uh, pilot, a prequel to One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest to Ryan Murphy because at first pitch, they met, met a manager, which I actually introduced him to, and away he went. You, many, that's really rare, obviously, you know, four and a half years out of, out of school and he's got a hit show on the air, uh, produced with a second season order. That's, that's rare, but possible. Many of our writers right now are working as development assistants with production companies. Um, they are, some of them are actually staff writers in TV writers rooms or writers assistants, which is that much coveted job which leads to a staff writing job. Um, I have a couple, I call them my kids, um, from two years ago who have managers and they, one has just optioned a project, a, show, a series to a director and they're developing that for a pitch. Others are, um, what are they doing? They're making the rounds pitching. Um, even in this time of COVID, they're, they're busy. Others have decided, and this is a valuable thing. They said, you know what? I love story development. I'm not a writer. I'm not gonna be a professional writer. I don't have the stomach for it or whatever they decide. And they, they go down the path of production executives, creative executives, video game developers, um, branded content developers. This is why we offer all those electives because, you know, being a screenwriter means you've got a lot of chops. You've got a lot of tools in your toolkit and you don't necessarily just have to focus on writing that great American screenplay. 
Oh, hi, uh, I'm Sean. I'm interested in the production program and cinematography. I have uh, two questions. Uh, what's the ratio of directing students to cinematographers and editors? I noticed you said you work on a couple thesis films. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in terms of, I saw in the intro video, you know, student in a VR headset, are there opportunities for new medium production like VR or virtual production? Um, I'll answer the second question first. We, we don't have, um, let's see. We're exploring VR. We actually, we actually have a task force that is uh, uh, currently looking at at VR and what courses uh, and you know possibly even if it's possible to develop a um, a degree program in VR. But we don't have much in VR right now. Uh, we do we do have a couple of VR events though that are really interesting. And that in fact that footage mm -hmm. probably came from one of the VR events. Um, one of the advantages of the Playa Vista facility is that it is a great place to hold events and conferences. And, and uh, we, every year we do a big uh, VR event in, at Playa Vista. Now, your first question was, oh, the ratio of cinematographers do. Yeah, um, the specializations are fairly new for us. We've, we've just instituted them in the last two years. Uh, and... Um, so we have a really high percentage of directing students compared to cinematography students. We're actually, we're actually trying to recruit more cinematographer and editing students um, because that ratio is so high. So if, you're, if your concern is finding a film to shoot, <laughs> there'll be lots of people asking you to shoot their film. That's not, that's not an issue. <laughs> Great, thank you. All right. Hi, hello, I'm Janet Chen. I'm interested in the uh, production MFA. Um, and I, I'm actually really curious about the uh, nonfiction documentary mm -hmm. uh, specialization. I was wondering if you could talk about that and also uh, maybe about the faculty for it. Okay, um, the faculty for that are actually documentary producers. Um, they're, um, we, have, we have three faculty members that specialize in documentary. And although I I don't. I generally don't teach documentary. My background is documentary. My my background is uh, public broadcasting, and public broadcasting documentary and and multi camera studio production. Um, but we have uh, uh, at least two of our faculty have um, have had a, a number of programs in uh, air on public broadcasting. Uh, we have a faculty member named Glenn Gephardt who is kind of a Cuba specialist, and he has produced a number of, uh, of really significant documentaries about Cuba. In fact, I co-produced the, the last one with him. Um, it's called Cuba, the Forgotten Revolution. You could probably find it online somewhere. Cuba, the Forgotten Revolution. Um, and, um, and then they, that, in, in that program, you would make two significant documentaries you would, you would produce um, a documentary in Prod 600, which would be up to 15 minutes. And then your thesis documentary would be up to 30 minutes. Now, even though you would uh, come in with a documentary specialization, you would, in your Prod 550, which is your second semester directing class, you would produce a short fiction film. So, and you know, it's, valuable for any documentarian to also know um, the, the bones in producing fiction. And you know, any, any, speaking as a documentarian, any good documentary has a three act structure just as uh, a fiction film would have. And, uh, and there's a lot to be learned about uh, organization and structure in documentary from fiction experience. Does that answer your questions? Yeah, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Hi everybody. Um, my name is John. Um, I have a question concerning kind of the collaboration between different departments on campus, whether that be uh, with theater or you know any other kind of department on campus. What's the collaboration with the film program versus or with other programs on campus? Well, we certainly get actors out of the theater department, mm -hmm. uh, and then they um, we. Although we don't have an animation master's degree, we do have an animation undergraduate degree. Uh, we have, we sometimes have students who have animation components in their mm -hmm. thesis films. And 
those those people often work with our animation undergraduate students or with um, people in the computer science program on campus who are who are interested in in animation. So I would I would think that that you know the main collaborations for the production would be either working with um, we have, we have something called the um, the College of Communication and Fine Arts, and those those are the theater people are in that in that uh, school, and the um, and then the the uh, computer science people are are in the uh, liberal arts college. Okay, thank you. Hi, um, my name is Red. I'm from New York City. Um, quick question, actually, about the makeup of the student body. Uh, at least in the, the production program. Um, I wonder, does LMU have sort of a preference for older students or do you typically see a lot of matriculation straight out of undergraduate? I know a lot of programs do prefer students that have lived a little bit post-college or post-undergrad. Um, so I'm just wondering um, what your stance is on that. Uh, we have no preference. We, we, um, we base our acceptance upon potential. Uh, we're, we, you know, you, you, you've probably seen the materials that we asked as part of the admissions process and Nicole can give you more information about that if you want it. But um, we are interested in anybody who seems like they might have good stories to tell and the potential to tell those stories. Uh, we have a lot of students come right out of undergraduate programs. We have students who are older. We have, we have in fact, we, uh, we have a production student who uh, came in in this last cohort? Who's probably in, in her fifties? But it's you know we it's it's there is no preference. It's a range. We have a range of people of all ages, all backgrounds, all cultural and and racial and backgrounds. And uh, one of the things we pride ourselves on is our diversity in our student body, and we work very hard. To, uh, to build a very diverse student body so you can all benefit from each other's experiences and backgrounds. And I would second that uh, same for both of our writing programs, um, truly the most diverse student body I've ever worked with, uh, as well as in terms of ages, backgrounds, walks of life. Uh, that's what makes it for a fun, electric workshop experience is to have all those different voices and points of view uh, offering feedback on each other's work. Thank you. Um, I have a question. My name is Naomi. I Hello. am from um, Houston, Texas. Um, my question is that in between um, the um, really the direct and specialization um, in the production department, do um, students like let's say non-fiction and fiction work together in certain projects outside of like the um, um, like maybe each other's projects or is it like a very individualized um, program? Um, the answer is yes, they do work together. And, and remember that, uh, I don't know if you, when you, when you joined the, the presentation, but during the first three semesters, you're taking the, the same core curriculum. And so during those first three semesters, you're all working together and, and students, you know, you are crewing each other's projects. So you are, you are getting to know the other students well, you're working in different capacities. In some courses, you're actually paired up with another student and forced to work on their project. Like for instance, in uh, Prod 550, which is the second semester, second directing class. And, and in that class, you're, you're doing a, I think it's a four to six minute, yeah, it's a four to six minute film. And we, we, um, we pair students in that class up. So the one person is directing a project, the other person is shooting that project, and then you flip and you shoot your, the, the, the other person's project for them. So, so we, in some classes we force you, but you crew, you crew each other's projects. And what, what tends to happen is people discover that they're good at a certain thing. Like you might discover that to your surprise, you're a really good editor, and you, and, or that you're a really good uh, production artist. You're really good at set design, and all of a sudden, the word gets out that that uh, you're really good at something, and then people are are seeking you out to work on their projects, uh, you know, because of your of your reputation. And that and and that often happens that you discover um, 
some skill, talent, or interest that you didn't even realize you had. Thank you. You're so welcome. I wanted to answer a, uh, one of the questions in the chat from uh, a journalist uh, undergrad from Brazil. Hello. Um, as I mentioned previously, we welcome writers who have written in other formats. Journalism is, journalism is a really ideal place to start as a screenwriter, not only because adaptation of true stories and fact is really the, the fodder of most projects that you see on film and television these days, but also because you already have an innate story structure, story sense. We give you the visual storytelling skills that you don't get in journalism. It may be a, a heavier lift at the beginning for you, but that's what all the classes are for, the rewrite classes, and we give you those tools to make that adjustment along the way. I myself have an MFA in fiction writing. I'm a self-taught screenwriter, and believe me, it is like learning a new language. It's very, very difficult, the art and craft of screenwriting. But that's what, we, what we're here for. We, we impose a lot of rigor in our classes, a lot of work uh, for our writers. Um, but you come out with that expertise that can get you hired. And that's our goal for you. Um, Patty, I want to address a question that Danny Nasoli has in the chat too. Sure. He's, um, he's asking if there is a, a, a particularly popular specialization. Um, directing fiction is, is our most popular specialization. Uh, and I think part of the reason is that uh, because our other specializations are fairly new and that the, you know, the word hasn't got out that these are areas that, that we specialize in. Um, and I, but I also wanna say that what, what happens sometimes with directing fiction students is that, that we have students come in thinking they wanna be directors, they wanna be fiction directors. And, uh, and in the third semester, you, uh, you produce a film in your, in your Prod 600 class. And that's kind of the make or break film. A lot of times, somebody who thinks they they want to be a director once they direct their Prod 600 film decides directing really isn't their cup of tea. That that they thought they wanted to be a director, but they really like cinematography better, or they like editing better, or they like producing better. And then that's why at the end of the third semester, we give you the opportunity to declare a specialization. So you can test the waters for a while. And, um, and if you discover that what you thought you were interested in and what you thought you really liked and that what you were good at isn't, isn't necessarily the case, you have the opportunity to make a change. Another question asked by uh, someone interested in WPTV. Um, you asked, what does that portfolio look like versus a writing for the screen portfolio? They're not all that different, except for the WPTV's thesis is a produced, uh, as I said, uh, trailer, uh, a sizzle reel pilot, um, the link of which can be put on your logline page for prospective managers, agents, and executives to view. Otherwise, your portfolio page will include the original material, the pilots you've written, as well as maybe that feature script you wrote in 551. Um, screenwriters generally include the screenplays they've written as well as the original pilots they've written. If you look at the directory, you'll see that most writers include about four or five projects on their page. Thank you for um, that. I I, I also want to point out to, um, uh, it's, I think it's Caitlin, or is it Caitlin? Caitlin uh, has a question. She said, I just logged in. What did I miss? This, is, <laughs> this session's being recorded, so you can go back and you can watch the whole thing over again. <laughs> um, Nicole can tell you how to access that. All right. Thank you. I had a, <laughs> oh, uh, you first, you first. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I have a quick question, which is that I'm really interested in the networking aspects available within the program. And I was wondering how many master's students go on to work together after the program? A lot. <laughs> that, you start, what, you know. <laughs> what, one, of the, one of the things that you'll discover regardless of where you end up in film school 
is that the people you work with in film school are going to be people you work with for the rest of your lives. And if you ever watch the Academy Awards, it always amazes me when I see somebody who like 30 years into their career, they go up there and say, I've been working with so-and-so since I was in film school and I'm so happy to accept this award with them. And, and, and that's the case. You build those networks in film school, both with, with um, among your fellow students and also within the industry, working internships and, uh, and, you know, and through the events, like the, like the events that, that uh, Patty was talking about earlier. And, and those relationships sustain you throughout your career. I also want to mention, yep. Yeah. Well, I'm going to add on to that, that um, there's a phenomenon that that's common with LMU uh, current grads and alums in which they tend to pass jobs around to each other and internships. And the employers love LMU students. So they'll say, okay, when you're done, bring me another LMU graduate student. You know, so you, there's this like LMU train of opportunities that happens because of the pay it forward philosophy that we have. Um, we really do believe that you don't, you know, film school workshops, they don't have to be a snake pit, a shark tank. Everybody, there's room for everybody in the business. You don't need, and your most fierce competitor is yourself. And your goal while at film school is not to step over people and bite, you know, their back so you can get to where you wanna go. There's room for everybody. You need to develop your voice, your skills to the nth degree so that you are ready to compete in the, in the industry beyond film school. So our collegiality is, is not just kind of this namby-pamby, let's be nice. It's a philosophy that you really need to maintain to sustain a career in the business. Yeah, I, I like to phrase that as healthy competition. We, you know, you, you need to be able to compete, but we want you, to, we want, we like to teach you to compete in a healthy way. And as Patty pointed out that, you know, when, when the whole boat rises, you all rise. And so we, we, uh, mm. we feel like that you're going to, you're going to develop relationships and you're going to pull each other up. I see we have a question in here about, um, of uh, funding films. We do not have grants to, to help you fund your film. That's an expense that you, uh, you're you going to have to factor in as you're you know calculating your expense of film school. Uh, one thing I will point out though, is that the amount of money you spend on a film does not make it a good or a bad film. We have had students who have spent you know, 30, $50,000 on a mediocre film. And we have had students who have spent Two thousand dollars on a superb film. So it's the, mm -hmm. it's the story. It's the way you craft the story. It's the way you execute the story, that determines uh, whether or not you make a good film. Uh, you know, not the, not necessarily how much you spend on building your set. Amen. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I, I oh I I um, hello I'm Matteo. Um, I'm interested in the film and production, um, specifically directing and fiction. Uh, as apparently many others are. Uh, and I was wondering, uh, um, on a, from a standpoint of uh, acceptance rates, how many students do you guys let in usually uh, um, um, into the program? Um, yeah. I don't know, Patty, are we at liberty to disclose our enrollment goals? I mean, I'm just, yeah. um, I don't see why not. Okay. Uh, Nicole, is there any? issue um that? we know uh i think it's also important though to um whatever information we share to also uh share our cohort sizes so that folks mm -hmm. know right um right. what that process might look like and how we kind of use a funnel to get to our final class well the um I, our, our our cohort that came in this past year was 46 students in, in film and television production um so, i'm sorry it was 48 we brought in we had we actually had an enrollment goal of 46 and we brought in 48 students in the film and television production program uh, this fall. And as for writing, uh, we like to keep our cohorts down to 18 per a program. So 18 in WPTV, 18 in screenwriting. This uh, year's first years, we have 19 in writing for the screen and 22 in WPTV. We thought that COVID would 
dissuade our writers from attending and lo and behold not a single person did not attend and it's been wonderful actually to know um first of all our zoom workshops are working really well um and uh while we await the you know liberation from quarantine i can attest that our programs are swimming along and um our grads are quite happy and know and just you know this is all temporary. We will get through this and be back in gear. Um, I did want to say one more thing about class. Oh, you asked about applications, et cetera. We are very selective um, because we can only accept 18 in each program. So that application should really illuminate your storytelling chops, your writing chops, as well as that video we ask you to do even a it's a selfie video where we ask you why do you want to be a storyteller what about your life has compelled you to be at this moment in time those those elements of your uh application of course are very important and we look at them very closely we read everything you sent uh, and I, well, yeah I'm sorry, okay. go ahead, Gino. Um, but we only have time for one more question because it's- Oh, okay, then let's, let's see if we can take it up out of the audience. Anyone? Sure, so Hannah, um, Hannah had a question in the chat actually. Do LMU students get training in help making diverse stories and stories with LGBTQ characters? I love that an LMU alum created Ratchet. It's a fantastic show. Nicole, may, maybe you would like to talk about um, uh, Dean Reisky's uh, work with her foundation. Do you know about that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Dean Reisky, the Dean of our film school, um, she actually is an Academy Award uh, director for the short film Trevor. And Trevor is the story of a young uh, middle school boy who is uh, struggling with his sexuality. And um, you can find the film on YouTube and I can put it in the chat as well because it's a short film and it's um, a comedy actually. Um, but what we realized and what uh, well, I should say what Peggy realized from that was um, there's more to do to support the LGBTQ community. And so she created the Trevor Project, which is a hotline for um, LGBTQ plus and questioning youth to talk to someone if they're struggling with those feelings. And how that relates to filmmaking, though, is that we want to be able to honor the dignity of every person, their backgrounds, their stories that they have to tell and also create a safe space for everyone to be able to um, be the filmmaker that you want to be. And that starts with people like Gino and Patty as your faculty, our dean herself in the um, values that she holds, and also the values that we have in our classroom. And so that's a huge part of what we do here and what we want all of you to reflect in your application. Um, so it is 1145. I have a couple of housekeeping. Um, to share with you just so you can uh, continue to stay in touch with us. And we'll also be sending a follow-up email after this session so that you can um, get all of it if you didn't uh, see it in the chat. Um, but can we I will say be- say one thing? I sure, just yeah. To, um, I just want to put a, a, a final button on the, the question of diversity. Um, I implore all of you to look at our directory and read the log lines of our writers um, you will see a, uh, a plethora of LGBTQ stories, stories from all walks of life, from every experience uh, you can possibly imagine in every genre. And I think it'll give you a real sense of the kind of writer and stories we are encouraging and nurturing here at LMU. Take it away, Nicole. Thank you, Patty. And Gino, did you have any closing thoughts too? Um, no, I, I just, I think I would just add that, um, you know, when you're choosing any kind of educational program, you have to choose what's a good fit for you. And the strength of our program is its diversity, its emphasis on collaboration, and uh, the, the, the skill of our industry contacts and our, and our location is really important because you know, we're in Hollywood's back door, uh, unlike Chapman, which is down in Orange County, <laughs> I might add. So, I, I, you know, it's all about fit. It, choose the program that you think is the best fit 
for you. And thank you, Gino. And if you're still not sure, um, if we haven't convinced you today, if you want to learn more about our programs, we will be sending a follow up email with a link to this presentation. Uh, we'll also be sending you some invites to a couple of our Meet the Professor series. We're doing um, a couple of sessions in the month of November, starting November 5 uh, with screenwriting, uh, with our screenwriting programs. Um, We'll have, you'll have an opportunity for those who are interested in those programs to meet some of the faculty members, ask a couple of questions, learn about their work and um, their experience in the industry, as well as get to know um, what it's like to be an LMU student, an LMU and SFTV student. And we'll be doing that also for production uh, beginning November 12th. So we'll send out, um, we have about four sessions for each uh, program. So we'll be sending out more information with that also. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to us at sftvgradprograms at lmu.edu. I'll um, put it in the chat. Um, if, uh, and you can reach Patty, Gino, or my, uh, myself there, and we'll be able to uh, continue the conversation. And um, if you're not familiar with us as a school, I encourage you to go to our social media at LMUSFTV on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. On Facebook especially, we just had our uh, SFTV awards, which is a really great way to learn more about the work that our students have done and um, the awards that they've been uh, received for it. Um, you can find it on our Facebook page. Um, but thank you so much for joining us. Next, you all can participate in different sessions with drop in admission advising, career and professional development, as well as um, financial aid. So um, more information was shared with you through the graduate admissions office. Um, and uh, if, it, if that's all you have for today, it was great talking to all of you. I know Patty and Gino really enjoy this event. And so we look forward to continuing this conversation and receiving your applications by December 11th. 